born in there or genetically modified anything so that the people of California, exercising their freedom and liberty, can decide whether they want to purchase it or not. And if they say it's fine, I have no problem with GMOs, then let them do it. But if they say no, just give me the knowledge, let me exercise my own independent freedom and liberty to decide. Congressman Mike Pompeo, a Republican from Kansas, would say no! We in Washington know better than you. We are going to prevent the states from exercising their state rights. We will impose one rule from Washington, D.C. Because we know better in the federal government. Now, that violates everything the Republicans claim to stand for. They are a wholly owned subsidiary, ConAgra, Cargill, and Archer Daniels Midland, and every other giant corporate interest out there. The Republican Party follows the money. And the this Safe and Accurate Food Labeling Act, which would preempt, there's your legal term, preempt all the state laws, it, it is what the Republicans are all about. Now understand, Congress has the power. They often choose not to use it. But this is disgraceful. The corporate media is not talking about it. I will keep talking about it. This is the ultimate in hypocrisy. This shows you the Republican Party is they're just corrupt. And by the way, don't just dismiss this. There are enough farm state Republicans and farm state Democrats, they would join and pass this in both the House and the Senate. And I wouldn't put it past the president for signing the thing. This is a real thing. This is about infringing on your freedom and liberty and my freedom and liberty by a big nanny state government in Washington that thinks they know better what we should know about the food we eat and the food we feed our little children. This is, this is disgusting and un-American, and it violates everything the Republicans stand for. Y'all should be ashamed of yourselves, especially you, disgusting, disgraceful Congressman Mike, Man Mike Pompeo. This is the Normando Match Show. Put that cookie down, especially if it's got GMOs in that cookie. Compelling content on the air and online. ABQTalk.com. This is part of our team for any time at all. You know, one of our slogans is, where fierce independence is the norm. One of the Republicans' favorite talking points is personal responsibility. Well, somebody today took major personal responsibility. I feel compelled to personally take on all the evil, which some priests, quite a few in number, obviously not compared to the number of all the priests, to personally ask for forgiveness for the damage they have done, for having sexually abused children. The church is aware of this damage. It is personal, moral damage carried out by men of the church, and we will not take one step backwards with regards to how we deal with this problem and the sanctions that must be imposed. On the contrary, we have to be even stronger because you cannot interfere with children. That is Pope Francis today. Obviously, you heard him in the background. That was the voice of an interpreter in English. Pope Francis today facing up to and taking personal responsibility for all the child sexual abuse in the church. It's really nice to see it. It'd be nice to see our political leaders doing much of the same. We are right back where justice is served with you. Would you wait a week for your shower to get hot? <laughs> Everything is stripped off of the show itself. An hour is boiling down to 38 minutes of tonight's Beyond the Norm segment. Senior legal analyst time. I got some great questions from one of our Beyond the Norm members about the case, the criminal case arising out of the stabbings, the mass stabbings just outside of Pittsburgh earlier this week. So tonight's Beyond the Norm segment, which is, of course, also commercial free. I'm asking for five bucks a month or $50 for a year. Uh, you got to get it all commercial free. So, tonight's Beyond the Norm segment, Senior Legal Analyst Time, answering a listener's questions about the criminal case of the 16-year-old sophomore who went on the stabbing spree outside of Pittsburgh. Mark in Seattle, good afternoon, sir. Hey, Norm, it's Mark Taylor Canso reporting live from sunny Seattle, where our big Bertha Tunnel dig project is a bust. We're having a $15 an hour minimum wage national conference on April 26th. And Progressive Radio Northwest just had another forum to continue this effort to try to bring back progressive voices like you to the Northwest. Well, I'm, I'm glad that I was able to go on January the 18th and speak, and, and we had a great time. You were there. You wrote a fantastic article about it. 
Uh, you know, it's Mark. I, I, I keep telling people that the corporate owners of radio are not going to put us back on. We've got to work around them. We've got to do internet streaming. We, we stream through Facebook, through our website. WCPT's got a great web stream. ChicagoProgressiveTalk.com. Uh, I mean, we've, we're on TuneIn. We're on iHeart. We've got our own apps at NormanGoldman.com. Uh, there's podcasting. And there's just a lot of ways to get us. The, the Mark, you know, you were there, so you know. But for everybody who's listening, the ratings of Limbaugh, Beck, and Hannity have collapsed. Their ratings are putrid. They are dreadful. Their their ratings are not only are their overall ratings awful, but they're having they get no ratings in the target demographic of, of people eighteen to thirty four. They're on every advertiser's do not buy list because they're doing vile hate speech, and the advertisers say we don't want to be associated with these guys. They're losing their shirts on these guys, and then they've declared us. As, as failures. So, Mark, when, you know, unless unless George Soros comes along and he's had years to do it and says, I'm going to buy, you know, 500 radio stations and put these people on, but we've got to end run them. That's the only way we're going to do it. Absolutely, Norman. Ah, That's what the latest absolutely. Uh, Progressive Radio Northwest Forum was about. I was one of the panelists and we talked about social networking and how to access uh, progressive media online. So it was a whole... Uh, seminar kind of workshop on how to use all these different platforms, what you and other folks uh, who have independent voices in the media are doing online, and we definitely are trying to convince folks, especially the uh, a lot of the progressive radio audience, that it's time to go online, just like you were saying. So we kind of picked up the ball where you left it during the, the forum that you were at and went, went with it. That... Um, it, the audio for that actually, and the slideshow is available on my YouTube channel, but anybody can go to progressiveradionorthwest.org. And I would encourage anybody listening in Seattle or Washington State and Oregon to do that. Now, we talked about how in Oregon um, they were able to put together a new online uh, radio station called xray.fm. So they are doing a lot of good broadcasting down there along with some local people like Carl Wolfson and, and right. Adam Klugman. Right. And by, by the way, I have a new piece actually at Truth Out about how the FCC suppressed its own research on the negative effects of corporate media ownership consolidation. So ongoing issue, but, it, but I um, give credit to everybody out there that's trying to be the pioneer and kind of set the new standard with all this new technology. I think the, the kids that are growing up with this technology aren't going to have a hard time with this transition. They're already listening to everything on their smartphone devices. Right. But, but this is the problem, Mark. There that needs to make the transition. That's so we've got to kind of help them do that. There you go. See, there's a, there's a mismatch. And that is the exact word, if I can be so bold as to offer the exact, what I think is the exact word. There's a mismatch. A lot of the folks who had listened to us on AM 1090 in Seattle, who had listened to us on KPOJ in Portland, who had listened on 960 KNW in San Francisco, and all these other stations that we've been tossed off of, these corporate-owned radio stations, what they are is older. And they're afraid of the technology. They don't want to do it. They don't want to. They don't know what a smartphone is. They're afraid of it. They think they're going to break it. They, they just, they're, they're just shying away from it. So the people who, who are interested in our content are afraid of the technology and they're scared of the technology to get it. The people who are totally like ducks to water with the technology, they don't know what we're doing. They don't know who we are. They, they, and they, they're not interested in, in, in finding out. So we've got a mismatch. The people who are totally with the technology, who are turning their backs on corporate radio, the ones who are smartphone streaming, the ones who are app streaming, the ones who are listening through Facebook, the ones who are podcasting, they're listening to music. They don't and they don't know what talk radio is. They don't they don't care about politics. And and the, the problem is we have this mismatch. How do we get us to the kids with the technology and how do we get the older folks who are afraid of the technology to overcome their fear and get with the technology? Because then we will all win. Tom and Ed, Stephanie, all of us will win. Well, there's two responses I have to that, Norman. Uh, one of it, I've come full circle on this issue of the technology because after the, the forum that we had on the 26th of March, I left with this takeaway, which is the next time I talk to folks who are uncomfortable with these devices, I'm just going to say to them straight up, 
What you have in your hand right there is the most powerful multimedia tool ever invented on this planet. And if you're afraid to use it, then there's not much I can say to you. <laughs> the, other, the other part of this is that there are a lot of young and up-and-coming um, up and, and independent broadcasters out there. We had Filter Free Radio's Jacob Dean, who's a part of the whole um, the Cole Sandler Radio or Not Network and Liberal Justice Radio. So there's a lot of new networks that are starting really organically. They're not really making any money, but they're definitely getting the word out in uh, small markets right now, and they're all across the country. So that, I think, might appeal to more of the younger folks. Jacob himself is only 25 years old. In fact, today's his birthday, so if you're listening, Jacob, happy birthday. Happy birthday. But, uh, yeah, he's a young one coming up, and he is part of that generation that's decided. He was a producer for Tom Hartman's show, actually, in, in Portland when he was at KPOJ and then in, helped him set up that uh, studio in Washington, D.C. But he went on his own, started his own uh, radio program, and he's there every week broadcasting, you know, trying to keep up uh, the progressive voices on the air and do the right thing. So, you know, I think that's where we're, we're going to get a lot of the new energy is from people discovering that everyone can have their own radio station now. And some of these folks who are very serious about it are going to be able to create these networks and generate some money to, you know, pay their bills and and upgrade their equipment. So I think it's possible from from both points of view that the older audience is going to get used to the idea that their grandkids keep showing up with their tablet, <laughs> right. their little handheld device, you know, uh, that they'll get used to the idea too once they understand that they have a lot more choice now. Part well, of it is that people it. have to make that choice. They can't just be mindless consumers anymore because... Well, you declare your fierce okay. independence, Mark. And the thing is, this is what I say to the older folks. Do you want to giant corporations to have a monopoly on your ears and your brain? Are you going to just weakly and meekly be a supplicant and just get on your knees and say, Oh, Clear Channel, oh, Cumulus, you own me. I'm your slave. Whatever you, whatever crapola you put on the radio, I will swallow it whole. Or are you going to give them the extended middle finger and declare your fierce independence and take control of your listening and grab the technology and say, you will be mine and I will listen to what I want to because the world is available to me now. Mark, I have found that is one way to really get people upset and get them to think about it. The other way, especially with older folks, is to say, hey, you had a transistor radio in the 1960s. You had a transistor radio. You had, a, you had one of those little wheels where you'd listen on AM. You'd move from station to station. You'd plug a little earphone into the jack in the, in the transistor radio, and you'd listen to, you know, you'd listen with one thing in your ear. The cell phone, the smartphone is now the transistor radio. If you could work a transistor radio in 1966, by God, you can work a smartphone in 2014. And not only that, Norm, but uh, there's no difference in my mind between a, an online radio website with programming available 24-7 and a, and a terrestrial radio station. There really is no difference. If you actually have a network that's streaming 24-7 online, there's no difference. You just have to hit the power button and click that icon, and you're there. Mark, there's, there's no a problem with that. Do that. No, there's a problem with that. The first problem is most radio listening is still done in the car, and number two, uh, people don't listen uh, at home nearly as much so until we can get people with the connected car, and that's happening right now, by the way, where you can just tap, tap, tap in that little TV screen in the dashboard and you get whatever you want and there's going to be apps in there. That is here now. It's not tomorrow. It's not 10 years from now. It's not wait for it. It's happening right now. You can, it's called the connected car, and you can have it right now. All the brand new cars, it's already built in. Mark, i got to leave it there, but I appreciate the call. You and I have a whole lot of work to do, my friend. We've got a lot of people. we got to move over to the technology. Glenn, you're on the Norman Goldman Show. Good afternoon. Hey, Norm. So I was thinking about one of your old Beyond the Norms about the judge who stood for environmental protections.